Hi everyone, happy Friday and welcome back to Nalo's Thrift Talk. I'm Lola. And I'm Nay. And we have a special guest today. Hey everybody, I'm Jason Thrifts. What's going on? <laughs> And today we have a Goodwill Blue Box unboxing. So, um, Nay, since you're the one with some of the boxes, do you want to introduce our episode today? Yes. So I have a, so there was a limited edition box, which was the um, women's, um, uh, women's vintage, I think it was just women's vintage box, vintage clothing but they had it only for so usually if you ask if you get a vintage box from goodwill blue box it's like a lot of men's t-shirts t-shirts stuff like that um sometimes jackets like track pants more like sports and like urban wear kind of stuff would you agree jason yep so you don't get like the girly dresses and the cool <laughs> like curated vintage stuff like like you would think of as in women's clothing so they had a special for just um they were selling, Brian said they were selling vintage women. <laughs> no, not quite. <laughs> so yeah, so they had a special where I think it was um, 10, I think it's 10 pieces of clothing you get. And they only had it for literally for one week. They had a promo for the secret drop members and it was only $50 for the box. That Those lasted like two seconds. I didn't get one of those, but I managed to, and Jason managed to get one of the boxes uh, uh, two weeks ago. And they literally sold out in a minute. Lola tried to get one and she couldn't get one. Yeah. not selling them anymore. I'm wondering if they'll bring them back, hopefully. But we have two of those boxes and they're supposed to be really good. So I'm excited to see what is in them. Jason has one. I have one. And I also have a um, mixed clothing box that I'm, I'm gonna, I'll, show, I'll show that to as a little bonus. So. Super excited to see what's in them. I'm so mad I missed out. I had one in my cart. I was checking out and then it like the payment glitched through PayPal. And by the time I got it through, it was gone. So I will be living vicariously as you guys <laughs> open your boxes. Yeah, but you got to be fast on that draw. I had a hit yeah, the and, I, and I, I didn't get my boxes. I was. I was refreshing the page from like 5.55, just like over and over again until it was there. The first second I saw it, I bought it. You know, I added it to my cart and started checking out, and it just still wasn't fast enough. So I really hope they do it again because <laughs> I really want one. But, um, you know, it's always fun to see the unboxing anyway. So, um, And before we get into that, we do have our usual segments. Mm -hmm. And Jason, I think you're also participating in these this week. So yep. yeah, two of us. Yes, and, and uh, for our home decor, we have a little surprise. So we'll get into that next. Um, we have to switch the screen view. We want Jason on the big screen. So maybe you can manage that. Because no. our guest of honor is going to go first. Okay, guest of honor. All right, although it was dirty, not that I care. Uh, I did thrift this shirt, uh, Grave Before Shave. <laughs> okay. so I want to show that and these are the best sweatpants I have ever owned and they were at a used record store for four dollars I didn't see them it was like a quick flash oh, sorry ta-da oh my they look pretty beat but they do they have a hole in them oh no that's just nope, a green nope, I think it was just a shadow I yeah. thought the same so, thing <laughs> that is record the best stores, when record you find stores are a great place to source clothes you don't know about that is crazy. I wouldn't have thought that. That's great, though, when you find like that great, that favorite pair of sweatpants or sweatshirt or like the comfort clothes. I love that. So, oh, they're so soft. Cool. Uh, what did you pay for your shirt, Jason? Uh, the shirt did have sleeves when I bought it. <laughs> it does not have sleeves because it also it's, a, it's, it's bigger coffee. than my size. So it's a 4XL, uh, but it was uh, $3.99. And the pants you paid? Four bucks. Same. Good. Yeah. Okay, so. Wow, Not so for you have an outfit. Very cool. Lola, I am curious about that shirt that you have. So this shirt, I think it came in a Goodwill blue box, which is why I thought I'd wear it today. Also, it's like the first day where it's nice enough to wear shorts. I mean, mm. Massachusetts nice enough to wear shorts. I think it might have gotten into the 50s today, just barely. But um, so I'm wearing shorts and t-shirt. Oh, it nice. says, feel the wind. And great. I remember correctly, I set this aside because I thought I would do like some distressing with bleach or something, but I put it on. And I was like, this is so cool all on its own. I don't think I have to do anything to it. So I'll probably give it a good wash and then list it um, on Depop. 
It looks great. Like I would keep it. I'd be tempted to keep it. I am tempted to keep it, but I have so many t-shirts. So. Understood. <laughs> yeah. One. So I have, um, switch my view here. So I have on something that both of you, I wore this for both of you guys today because I know it has something on it that both of you, both of my co-hosts will love. So <laughs> it, is, it is. I right? get it. Nice. Can you see it? got the rainbow and it says Hawaii. I got the, yeah, so it's got the pride rainbow for Lola and it's got the Hawaii for Jason. So very nice. I like it. Armor. It's, it's a women's t-shirt. Now I actually got this from shopgoodwill.com. It was a, um, it was a actually like an, it was an auction that I won and I bid on it because I thought it was cute and it was new with tags. And I was, I had the intention of reselling it. And I actually surprisingly won the auction for like 99 cents or something. It was one of those auctions that they were doing for like a penny. So I paid the shipping on it. And then once I got it, I liked it too much to sell it. So it's mine. And <laughs> um, these earrings came in my Jomar source. I, I got a box from Jomar that was um, a reseller box and it was like a, a variety box and these were in that so i decided to keep those the headband is actually it's actually a scarf it's a vintage 60s scarf with a crazy very 60s it's poochie, very cool. yes it's like a poochie-esque print mm -hmm. and my necklace is really special and it's kind of got a sentimental value too you can see it i will show a close-up of it um oh i gotta put my screen on back Hi. Uh, sorry. There you go. Thank you. Okay. So if you look, if you look, you can see that it's got, um, like the, it's the beads are actually, you can see the close up. I'm trying to zoom in. I can't zoom in any more than that, I guess. Um, but they are actually styrofoam and what they are, are it's from an egg crate and Shut up. Yeah, no way. somebody took the, like an, a styrofoam egg, egg crate and it's got a more interesting history actually than that and they hole punched the the styrofoam and turned them into beads and then strung them with actual beads so that's what that is and um it is um so it was actually given to me by when i was a little girl some of my early thrifty thrifting days not only were flea markets as i've talked about but also um i used to go to crafting bazaars and church rummage sales with my grandmother who passed away way back in 1990. Um, I was only 13 when she passed. Uh, so she actually um, got me this at a, when I went to her, I still remember her buying it for me at a church rummage sale back when I was probably like 10 years old or something. Wow. So I, I have saved it all these years. This is one of my early thrifted items. Don't wear it often because it is very fragile and it is sentimental. But it's also really cool because it's a recycled piece that was made from um, recycled egg and egg, a recycled egg curtain. So I would yeah. never have guessed that. Yeah, I, I've, I've never seen such a thing. Yeah, so it's got that. It's it's vintage eighties. It's from my grandma. It's got the thrifting connection mm -hmm. and the recycled uh, repurposed. Thing, you know thing going Very on cool. so got everything yes heather was asking how do you tie your scarf on my head mm -hmm. so i'm not going to untie it now because i'll mess it up but it is a just a long thin piece of fabric literally wrap it around tie it at the bottom underneath wrap it back around just tuck it in so looks great Our tutorial nice. coming next week <laughs> and then you tie it like this <laughs> yeah, we could do a how-to video on that. Sure. Angelique says, "Gonna look at egg cartons differently now." Same. Yeah, it's really cool, and you can tell because like they don't usually come in styrofoam. They, I guess, they still do come in styrofoam. Yeah, exactly. but remember that greenish blue, like that green-colored styrofoam they used to come back in the '80s. So this is like old-school egg carton too. Okay, so our next segment, and I was told that. I don't need to bring my thrifted home decor item this week because Jason supposedly has mine. So well, I'm very curious to see what that is. All right. So me first then. Sure. All right. So I'll, I'll do mine. And uh, this was thrifted a while ago and I found it in my regular house. And, and if you don't know, my office is all creepy clowns. Ooh. Yeah. 
And he's he's a little broke. He's got a hole in his head too, so it makes it even oh, creepier. That is a creepy clown. Yes. Yep. So this is my thrifted home decor for my creepy clown in my office, and then f freshly thrifted for Nadine's house. <gasps> oh my goodness! Isn't that cool. Is that gravel art? No. So it's like it looks like cork, but it's thin and and, and kind of bouncy. Oh wow! Kind that's of, awesome. Kind of spongy. Almost. Oh, that is so cool. Oh, I'm so excited. So there you go. I'll get that in the mail to you. Hey, uh, can you guys come ship this, please? <laughs> Thank you so would you, much. Would you like it with or without a saver sticker? Oh, you can leave the saver sticker All on right. it. But, yeah. How much How much was that at savers? Uh, six bucks. Okay. so You are worth six bucks to me. Thank yeah. you so much. And, and we'll how have, have Kelly show you how to, we're going to ship something like that. Sweet. And I, am get the address. I can't wait to get that. I will put that. Get up it shipped up. right on the air to you. There you go. See? That is awesome. And how much did you pay for that? Six uh, the, no, no, oh, not the, the clown. Uh, the clown. I, uh, does it still have his tag on? No, I tore it off. The clown was at Goodwill. I can see by the tag. I probably paid five bucks for it. And I think I wanted too much. It won't stop. Do you remember <laughs> this, Jason? I have. Um... Remember that? Oh, yeah. Finally, that also a creepy clown. Thrifting days in uh, Philly. Yeah, so this used to be the backdrop from when I did thrifty business with Jason. This is always in my background. I still have it sitting here. And um, this, I, it's it's kind of like one of those fun, sentimental pieces from our days of thrifting together. But um, Aww. It, Aww. Is a, it, is a, it is a very um, amateur <laughs> uh, that is uh, kind of also got the creepy factor. Definitely so. adds to the charm, though. It does. Yes, I love it. So it's got that. Yes. And Lola, what do you have today? I that I love having thrifty friends because you can buy something at a thrift store for a gift, and part of the gift is I only spent five dollars on this. Oh yeah, right? absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I love it. Yeah. So. Um, I one of the things I collect is Polish pottery, which coincidentally my mug today is a Polish pottery piece. But this one is one of the few pieces I've actually thrifted. Um, I usually buy them new, um, mostly in Poland, but I found this one at my local thrift store. And it's probably the piece that gets the most use because usually it's full of uh, kitchen utensils and it just sits on my counter. And I don't remember how much I paid for it, but I think it was like three or four bucks. I mean, it was pretty cheap. And, um, you know, new, this would be, I think, at least 30, 45, maybe, depending on what store you find it at. Yeah. Um, sometimes you can find this at, like, TJ Maxx for a good deal. But if you find it at, um, like, an upscale kitchen store, I remember there's one in Philly that was selling pieces like this for just, like, crazy amounts of money that I would never spend. Um, but some people buy it. So what is um, on the bottom of it? it? This is just, it's uh, traditional Polish pottery. Is it fine? Um, the design, I don't remember. Is it signed? Sorry? Is it signed? It, this one is not signed. Usually oh. they are. Um, this is one of the few pieces I've seen that isn't, but um, it's a pretty it's a pretty traditional design, so I, I'm confident I know what it is. Um, yeah, there's yeah. a piece that pottery at estate sales. Yeah, mm -hmm. if you see it at estate sale, you got to pick it up. Um, and then also, Jason, um, we have a question for you. Oh, I just I just answered. I don't think I, I don't think it was broke when I bought it. I think I had a ton of bags that day from the thrift store, and I just kind of chucked oh, them no. all in the back seat. They put it in the chat, yeah. Okay. And uh, it got broke that way. So pay attention when you're putting your stuff in the back seat. It's and if you're me, be really careful because I drop. Right. On this, it's a rare occasion where it kind of adds to it, not detracts. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> but if you were going to resell it, that would have uh, been yeah. A yeah. yeah. So ah, it's still going. <laughs> That's funny. All right, so we have a, another ah, another segment. We have another segment. Uh, <laughs> so usually you're on top now under the sign, Jason. So to duck. <laughs> I don't want anyone to see who I am. Oh boy. Um, oh no, put me back up there. <laughs> I can I can take the logo off. No, that's cool. I'm good. Okay. All right. Look at that. All that. right, there you go. So uh, we have we haven't done this segment in a while. If you remember from some of our past episodes, we have a thrifted history segment where we talk about 
a specific thrifted item or a sale that we had from a thrifted item where the piece has some kind of significance or some kind of cool history. We had uh, talked about, we, we found um, an awesome uh, historical Jewish book that had been, it had been given, it was called a tonic and it had been given to a family, it, it somehow ended up at the thrift store and it belonged to a family, it had, it had been given to a rabbi we tracked down the rabbi, tracked down uh, the rabbi's family. He had, he was deceased, and we ended up getting it back to his niece, um, which was a really cool story. So things like that, you know, that that happen is is what we talk about. So Jason has one today, and I don't know full disclosure. I do not know what it is. So we are going to um, see what Jason has. So about. I forgot what the segment was about. You told me I'm like, oh, I got the perfect thing. It wasn't, it kind of thrifted. So my buddy, uh, Cletus cleans out houses and then, and then it, when things that don't need to go to the dump come to me and then we saw them online. So he had a house where they had a lot of records and tapes. He goes, look, it'd be easier. You just came to the house today. I'm like, all right, cool. So I'm sorting through basically a stack of, uh, booklets from video games, PC video games. And I see this in between oh. and I don't know what happened to the people who live there. They either passed or just skipped town and left their stuff behind. That's a lot of his clean outs. People, people moving to Vegas, it doesn't work out, and they just skedaddle. Oh, right. I guess I forget. Vegas is a very different place than I would have very, guessed. Very transient. Yeah, and so they, he did the say place. that the family had taken what they wanted. Well, they missed this because this is definitely something that should have stayed with the family. So inside is all the letters that would have been this guy's dad wrote to his mom when he was stationed in Korea in 1950. Oh, my gosh. So I grabbed uh, a couple examples out for you. So this is a handwritten one. He was in uh, Hamhung, uh, North Korea. This was November 23rd, 1950. Oh. Dear Mom, I received your two letters yesterday and sure was glad to get them. As yet, I haven't received your fudge, but I should get it before long. I received Dixie's fudge and also Dad's. So <laughs> Mom and Dad make their own fudge. I guess. Which, but both were moldy. Oh, sad. Oh, geez. I was say, that doesn't sound like something that's going to keep long when you're in Korea. Yeah. But... <laughs> Dixie's was put in a coffee can and wrapped individually, but it's still molded, as I imagine yours will do the same. It takes two, so darn long for the packages to get here, or here from the States. So that was that was the handwritten one. And then he must have got a job at a typewriter because in this one, he typed his mom a letter. Oh. And so this one, did he have a date on it? February 50, February 1951, Korea. So he was stationed there for a while. I haven't heard from you for quite some time now, so I thought I would drop you a line to let you know how I am. We are moving again. This time I'm in the rear echelon, so I have to work just uh, just twice as hard now. It's the other guys that all went forward. We're supposed to move out in four or five days and join them so it'll be easier after we do. Now, I go to work at 7.30 in the morning and work until 1 the next morning. Boy, are these hours long, too. Everyone has to do the work of two men. Now the others aren't around. I'm supposed to be typing but uh, for work, but what they don't know won't hurt them. <laughs> <laughs> so he's using company equipment uh, uh, to... Uh, write uh, a letter to mom. Uh, I have saved up uh, $475. By the time I get home, I will have $600 and able to buy a brand new car. Oh, wouldn't that be nice if you could buy Those a brand new car? Yeah. <laughs> and then this one I thought was the coolest because, okay, so it's handwritten and it's obviously lined paper for the writing, but the back oh, is this map oh, of wow. Tokyo. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so uh, pretty awesome. Today's the first day mm. of next. Uh, uh, had for, um, boy, this one's tough. I'm working again at 7.30 in the morning. As soon as I finish the letter, I'm going to go take a shower. The first one in 11 days. Oh, my. So uh, uh, his mom's name was Mrs. Evelyn Berry. She lived in Washington State. He was a private first class at this time. He was out of uh, San Francisco. And I have the name of what I think would have been his son, who either passed or skipped down, uh, and his son's wife. And so um, I'm going to see if I can find any family members. Yeah, who, that's what who, I was going to say, that, that that would be who great. might want this. Plus, 
we I have a that. picture we think of him maybe recovering in an infirmary in Korea. Wow. Yeah. He's wow. in what looks like an adult crib. So if it was a picture from today, you would think, oh, that person's got a kink and they want to be a baby. But of course, <laughs> it's from like the 1950s. And I'm like, weird that they build a crib, but it was a big crib. Yeah. And it looks like he's recovering. So, and then I think I have a wedding photo too. So I'm going to see if I can uh, uh, dig up uh, who they sh could go to. Uh, and if not, it's a cool piece yeah. of history. That would be nice if you get the back to the family because that's where, uh, obviously, where it belongs. Um, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like it looks like they were kept so carefully that they were really treasured. So yeah, but you would not have you know, what what I just did with these. You could see it, but you couldn't see that thing. And so I'm just sorting through these booklets. Like any of these games worth anything? Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, what is this? And they start reading the letters. I'm like, holy crap, this yeah. is awesome. And there was he left. See, it makes me think he he passed because there was a. Um, a POW uh, MIA leather vest, like a, a, a motorcycle vest. And that's not something you just kind of abandon. Yeah. And, and yeah. so now I don't know if that was because his dad was one hmm. or he was one too, maybe Vietnam. Uh, who knows? Yeah, you never so, know, but, but it should go back to the family if, you know, if it can, if you can get back yeah, to the no, family. I'm going to do some digging, but it's pretty cool when you can find things like that. Even if I don't get it to anybody else, just to read the history of a private first class in the, uh, I think it was in the Navy. Uh, well, it was stamped Navy, but he said Marines at one point, and it was also on Navy letterhead. So I don't know if the Navy just, they, they give them rides, the Marines, where they need to go. So, well, Marines uh, are sub part of the Navy, right? Nope, they're all separate, but but the Marines need a ride because they don't really usually have their own. We didn't okay. put any on top yet. All right, so it is packed with pool noodles and ready. Oh, wow, that was nice. quick. Wow. Well, that will arrive safely. I, I know that. Awesome. Yeah, uh, Kent, Stephanie said she did something similar with a work idea she found with some old family in an old pattern. So that's another thing. Always look in, in when you have mm -hmm. things like that because people do stick things in books and patterns and you know in with when, in with magazines and whatnot. So um, yeah, it's definitely the right thing to do, just like we did with that with the uh, with the tonic. Now that book was worth, and we had to spend. What did what did you 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 fronted the money? I think it was it was. I expensive. think it was like fifty dollars or something. Fifty bucks, to, but we, so we like had to bail the book out <laughs> in the you know in order we to like get. But it didn't money ahead. Sure, it was yeah. It was like clearly something that was that belonged with the family, mm -hmm. and it wouldn't have been right to sell either because right. it just didn't. Yeah, so that's a cool story. You'll have to let us know what happens, yeah. Jason, and we'd love to follow up on that. Um, mm -hmm. as kind of a part two thrifted history on the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's gonna take about a month. I got I'm behind on a bunch of projects, but then when I have a week, I'm gonna start to. Yeah, this time you're due to be a guest again. We'll have you on again. You can do part two. So cool. If you get some. Uh, Hopefully you'll get an update. And then we have um, a couple housekeeping uh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> housekeeping announcements. So Jason, do you want to take this? Yeah. So uh, I teach a lot of classes and mainly uh, my flipping media classes. So flipping CDs, flipping records, flipping cassettes. And as a perfect commercial, uh, if you watched my show last week with my mom, she found a whole bunch of media. Well, she sold some of it and uh, made quite a bit of money. So not that I don't think my mom can do it, but when you're 78, you don't like to change too much. So if my mom can kick ass on flipping CDs, anyone can. So head over to jasonthrifts.com, click on the class button and get yourself uh, making extra money because you're already in the thrift store or the estate sale. You oh, might yeah. as well take all the music they got and make some extra cash. And I must say that, you know, even like Jason's classes have added to what, to all of my knowledge, I wouldn't sell half of the things that I do. And I would not, I would not sell music. Now Lola and I have both thrifted in person with Jason mm -hmm. and seeing him sh shop music. And he's just, flip, 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 flip. it's like, it's watching, very impressive. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is like witnessing a miracle when, when you watch him uh, and he's just so like, just, now I have not obviously gotten to that point, but I have learned uh, so much just from watching him and taking his classes. And, you know, I, I'm always, you know, flipping CDs and records now and making money. So, all right. And our next, what did I just do there? Um, it's so dark. I don't know why that went like that, but there you go. So next uh, in your show. Yeah, so usually I do thrifty business on Thursdays, but I have an amazing sourcing opportunity next Thursday. So no show. So I figured that was an okay excuse to not have a show. 
when you have an amazing source and opportunity, and I will be sharing that. But if you didn't see last night's show, go back and watch it. My buddy Tim, who uh, Lola and Nadine and I have tons of knowledge in our head about a lot of this stuff. Tim squashes all of us combined. Tim's okay. knowledge is insane, and he likes flipping mugs, and we talked quite a bit about mug. Mugs and other glassware last night, so uh, yeah. check it out when you have a chance. And I did see uh, most of the show last night, and he was an awesome guest, packed with knowledge. I learned a lot, uh, so definitely check that out, as well as all of Jason's shows. And, and this week, Mom's idea was, let's talk about coral. So we've talked about seashells in the past, because most people never look at seashells at a thrift store or at a state sale and go, money! But there is crazy money in some seashells. Same with coral, especially because you can't just go snap it off the bottom of the ocean floor anymore. But the old stuff that's out there makes its way to uh, mm -hmm. thrift stores and estate sales. So this is all this coral in this picture is mom's that she's thrifted over the years. Wow. So yeah. uh, again, crazy money. So we're going to be showing a lot of different examples of coral. This is this Sunday, 7 p.m. East Coast, 4 p.m. on the West Coast. That is a cool topic and not one that I'm sure many people know a lot about. So, And then next week, we are going to be doing our show on Y2K fashion trends. So that's going to be next Friday, the 2nd, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. And if you don't know about Y2K, it is all the rage, especially with Gen Z these days. And if you are not selling on Depop, we will be talking about why you should be selling on Depop because that is... I mean, there's other platforms as well, you know, not just Depop, but Depop is the hot spot right now for Y2K fashion, and there is a lot of money to be made in it. So we'll be talking about that next week. And again, I want to mention that I do graphic design and I am offering, I'm still offering these prices, but not for much longer. Um, so if you are an online seller and you need a store logo, a store banner, business card, package inserts, anything like that. I can help you. I can help you out. And if you buy one package, like let's say you need your Etsy store done, and you also have an eBay store, um, I'll give you twenty five percent off of the second package. So, let me know if you need any help with that. And we're going to be getting right into our main topic today. So, um, we will. Uh, Stacey, do you want to? You want to start? Oh, okay. I am excited to see what's in these boxes. So. Okay, so the box is open, but I did not look through it because I said I had four boxes and I had to make sure I was bringing yeah. a, bringing the right one. So I did a little tease last night with my. Uh, I'm excited! I want to see the tag on that bright. Is it suede? My, my chapeau. Is it suede? That's it actually fun. fits your big head. It is ultra too. suede. Okay. And it was from Lomans, the best for the least. I remember that. I remember oh that. man, I miss Lomans. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that there is nice. Go. You should do well with that. So the original price was ten ninety nine. Yeah, but you'll still do well. And with that's that. um, that's an older logo. I don't remember that logo, so it's at least nineties, probably. So yeah, very cool color. Uh, the color right. isn't doing it justice. It's a little, it's a little more green than yeah. you're seeing it, but I love it. So that's an instance where you would not take the original price price off. But you can sell it for more because people will understand that it is vintage and prices were much less back then and you're paying up for you know the vintage factor so all right have you ever heard of uh joseph a yes so now this does not look vintage to me it is an older tag so that's 90s okay. so this is a uh hoodie okay like fur lined hoodie with a little fur on the cuffs too. Very 90s. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely 90s. Uh, great shape. It's got Velcro, but don't say Velcro. Hook and loop. No, hook and loop. Yes, or you will get a bureau. And then, uh, uh, yes, so Joseph A, like the modern or the more modern pieces don't do as well, but um, that's an older tag. That's 90s. So you will sell not on the brand, but on the style. Oh, well, for sure. Yeah, yeah, the fake fur is coming back. I think yeah. like those trims like that. So. All right, how about La Belle? The def definitely vintage. Mm, I don't know the brand, but La La Belle. Oh, okay, it made in USA. So yeah, that yep. looks like an '80s tag, '80s or early '90s. Uh probably probably more like early '90s. What do you think? Little, yeah, little, definitely little, dress. Like a little baby doll yeah. kind of dress. Yeah, so that's '90 baby doll. Yeah, that was. So these are all good Depop items. Mm -hmm. Lined. Nice. You could call this grunge. I could see someone wearing it oh. today with like Doc Martens, probably in the 90s. With stain still. Nice. 
That's okay. That'll you can, come out. That'll come yeah, out. Soak okay. it. Soak it in Oxy. All right. There's no way this is vintage. <laughs> mm, yeah. It was, is it? Where is it made? Oh, it's made in China. Yeah. There's no way this is vintage. Uh, what do you think, Lola? Oh, well, it's got a cool little tie, though, at the bottom there. Yeah, I think it might be early. Mid-2000s, mid maybe. Yeah. Like, it's kind of... Not the kind of vintage I was hoping to see in these boxes. No, right. it's yeah. kind of on the cusp of Y2K, I guess. You could probably get away with calling it Y2K, but... Mm -hmm. It's kind of got an iridescent glow, though, right? It's, like, got a... Yeah. It'll, it'll do good on Depop. It should... How about Noosh In? <laughs> I assume that you're butchering the name somehow, but... Not a bit. <laughs> not a bit. Noosh in. Oh, you're not. No, you really oh, aren't. Okay. So these are leggings, but they're made in the USA. It is definitely an older tag, so they are vintage. Yeah, it's got the paper tag. So look at the leggings with the little bobbles on them. Ooh, those are kind of cool. Those are cool. Yeah. Uh probably 80s, 90s. Kind of Madonna-ish. Yeah, I could see that also working as like a costume. It's what I imagine. You know when people dress up for like the '80s themed party and do like the super aerobics, like yeah, yeah. kind of outfits. It's that kind of thing. But I could also see someone buying it to wear just for a funky outfit. And and a hey, thanks a lot for thinking I was butchering it. Thank you, by the way. So, well, I was, I was see now I was I was pretty picturing like N O U C H E with an accent over the <laughs> yeah, years. whatever. Fenrite and Mason. I've never even heard of the brand. I have heard of that brand. Um, it's not Fenrite and Mason. It's Fenrite and what is it? Manson. Manson. Yeah, Manson. yeah, yeah. I have a sweater. Now that is a kind of a mid-range brand. That's acrylic, so you know. Uh, I have a sweater that I picked up at the bins, and it has like the, the elbow pads on it. Um, that's that brand, and it's kind of like a mid-level brand. You should get, you know, maybe twenty twenty. And it's like it looks like it's a chenille sweater. Yeah, it's also okay. something that's kind of in. But that's again, it's nineties. It's not, um, like Dixie Bell was saying, not exactly what I was imagining from yeah, like Jackie you know. O kind of mm -hmm. thing. Or, yeah, about Patricia Jones USA. No, I don't know that. But mm -hmm. again, USA is a good thing. I'm assuming so got, that's like a small boutique brand, probably. It's got the shoulder pads and and wait a minute. <laughs> I thought these went together. Are no. they is it not a vest that goes under the blazer? Well, yeah. you would think this is six no. P, this is twelve. Oh. oh, so it's just a huge coincidence. That's why huge coincidence, same brand, same color. That doesn't work. They probably were donated together. I'm gonna assume that, or they had a huge like donation of dead stock or something. Yeah, that's odd. Across boxes. <laughs> wow. Uh, do you want me to finish the box, or you know, what do we? What do you normally do? Yeah, you want to do yours? A few yeah, I, I can do a few, and then okay, cool. I'm gonna have more because I have the other box, but um, okay. So I have emptied mine into a bag just because I am doing this at my mom's house, so I didn't want to carry the whole box up, you know, two flights of stairs. So okay. Okay, this looks interesting. So this is, here's the tag. Andrea Jovine. So that's kind of like a mid-level, you know, brand. It's this is this would be definitely 90s, I would say. That's the Walmart. So that's a good sign for yeah. early 90s, probably. Yeah. Hong Kong. So maybe late 80s, early 90s. But it's made in Hong Kong. So that's on all. Oh, this is awesome. That's cool. That is very cool. It's got like, I like that better than everything I've shown you so far. <laughs> I kind of like the flapper for, ooh, I like this. I might have to keep it. <laughs> this is so cute. That's that supposed to be my fun. box. <laughs> ooh, look. So this is, this is really cute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is, um, it's got the fringe on the bottom, like the, that's awesome. All right. So. That is a good one. Um, all right. This has a lot of, this looks like it's got some stains on it, but I can soak it with Oxy. This is a polyester shirt. Definitely 80s. Um, I don't know the brand. It's, you know, nothing that, that would, that I would, would have known. Yeah. I love it. It be 70s. Paper tag. tag. Uh, it has the care. Tag. Yeah. So it does have the hair. It could very well be 70s though. It's got the RN number and the, and the, so this could be 70s. 
probably like late 70s early 80s yeah mm -hmm. Uh, it's just a plain beige nylon shirt, but it does have like the balloon kind of sleeves. These these this style is in the sleeve style. Yeah, See? that's so, good. Yeah, I mean it's it, it's a little basic, but it's it still has some trendy. spots on it. But I think a, an overnight soak in oxy might take care of that. Ooh, I see acid wash. No, that's good. <laughs> this is cool. This is a a denim mini skirt. Looks tiny. It is a size. 13 juniors, but I'm guessing that, uh, so junior sizes are run smaller, but it looks more like a modern day, maybe a six or eight. It's a pretty good size. It doesn't look teeny tiny. Oh no, no, it's it's definitely, and there's What's the brand. Cat. Can you see it? The Clothing Academy. I do not know that one. I don't yeah, either. I don't that looks that like one. it could be almost a little bit more recent, like 2000s. Yeah, but the tag is not the oh, inside yeah. tag. It's got the, it's got the paper tag. Oh, okay so it is an older i think it's probably 90s or it you know i'm looking it up it's made in usa so i don't know I've never heard. the the clothing academy right in that order right. not the yes. academy oh this is tiny holy crap um <laughs> okay so this does not have a tag the tag is cut out it is so teeny tiny, though. It looks like an extra, extra small. Holy crap. It's got Very a cool, though. It's a cropped uh, print. It's a crop top. Uh, the, the crop tops are still in style. And some little depop Gen Z person will be able to fit into this. Um, this is, it's so tiny. Like, the bust has to be, like, um, I would say it's probably got, like, a 28, 30 bust on mm -hmm. it. It's really small. It would look cute with that skirt. If I mean, they're not the same size, but no, true. Yeah, that would. Yeah, that's a cute outfit. <laughs> yeah. So we're making outfits here on Nalo's Thrift Talk. <laughs> <laughs> and then this, I do not know this. Actually, I think I have seen this brand. I think it's kind of like not real high end, but not. I think I've seen. I do believe I've seen this brand though before. Got the paper tag. This is pro made in USA. So this is definitely um, early '90s, probably. Or late eighties. It used. Can you see the tag? The vintage, yeah. vintage. There, I'll make it. I'll make it fancy. <laughs> that is very cool. It is very cool. And here's the inside. It almost looks like an angry face. Mm. Here's the inside tag. You can see. This is how I know. I can tell. It's definitely mm -hmm. um, very early nineties, early eighties. Yeah, the so. style screams nineties to me, but. It might be, yeah, it might be early 90s. Um, it, it's, got, it's got a little bit of yellowing and a couple stains, like, on the, you can see the mm -hmm. there. But, I mean, that's not a deal breaker. Buttons are really cute. So that should do pretty well. Um, should I do, like, one more, Jason? Or? Sure. All right, what's this? Ooh. Is there? No, uh, ooh. I'm, like, I'm trying to say, I don't. Opal by Lorraine Wardy. This looks like kind of a Western thing. And the tag doesn't look made in El Paso, Texas, USA. Here's the well, that's like a, cool. Deep in the heart of Texas. And the the, the uh, pattern looks very 80s. Yeah. That might do pretty well though, because I know I've been trying to research that one piece of like cowgirl clothing I have and some of that stuff goes for decent money. It's really cute. I don't know the brand. I mean, it's obviously just a small kind of probably boutique-ish kind of, you know, Western Texas. Yeah, local, like a Western wear probably brand. Probably in El Paso. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of cool print. Do um, you think it's 80s or might be? I would think it's 80s or night, early 90s. Yeah. I don't want to trade boxes, what I think. I like my box so far. All right, Jason, go ahead. I still have a few things left. Though. All right. New, new would have bumped me to the big one. New with tags, but the tag is Marshalls. Oh, let's switch you. Oh, you got it. Go. Old Marshalls. I was tag. looking up old Marshalls tag. Holy moly! That is old. But the brand is uh, Signet. Hmm. I don't know the brand, but and it's just a blouse. Okay. Well. <laughs> That's pretty much been my box. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not. That summed it up perfectly. Well, uh, right, I'm jealous about the beret, though. 
Okay, this is pretty epic. This will be the last thing. Okay, there is one good thing, I think. Okay. I'll make that last. Uh, Emily Reger. Mm -mm. Nope. Silk. Where's the bead? Made in China, but it is, yeah, but it is silk. Okay, that's good. Oh, okay. That's yeah. nice, pretty basic. Oh. New with tags. Yeah, I didn't even see the tags. Ta da! Oh, good. Okay. Well, that's a good, that's a selling point. Size small, color ivory, 100% silk with a little extra button. So, you know, not too bad. Yeah, that's not bad. You'll, <laughs> you'll, you'll be okay with that one. What is this? Oh, my gosh. Too bad my mom wasn't, isn't this small because she would love this. Oh, my gosh. I don't think there's any tags. It's a turtleneck sweater, but in the Cleveland Browns colors. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That is that so is very cool. cool. <laughs> But I don't see any tags. Let me see if there's any down on the side. Oh, there it is. There it is. Oh, it's so I can definitely tell it's vintage. There's the union tag. Oh, nice. Yeah. It looks on, like a man. Probably is 70. It, is it the black and white tag or it is the blue and white tag? Blue the and white tag. I -L -D -W -U. Okay. But I don't blue think so. That is older than the red, white, and blue tag, I think, if I remember correctly. Okay. So it's a cool piece. It's not real big, but it's a cool piece. Definitely yep. looks 70s. And it, it should sell on style or on the colors, like you said, another another Browns fan. Well, boo. All right, I'll show you the cool thing. This is a silk shirt. It's kind of cool. That is cool. But here's Ooh. the boo part. We're just going to cut out the brand name, name the whole tag. Well, that's okay. Though. That's not a deal breaker. But again, I bet it was sold at... Um, like a TJ Maxx type store. They used to do that instead of just now they usually use a marker. Like with the salvage, salvage mm -hmm. pieces. Like but maybe yeah. China, I don't think that's vintage, but it's silk. Well, let, me right. see, let me see the, the, the pattern on it again. I didn't really get you. Pretty cheap. cool. Okay. Yeah. That'll sell. That, that'll it, it, it's like paper doll clothing. If you see the little tabs and all the yeah, clothing. Yeah. That'll be a good depot piece. All right. You ready for the best piece? I'm ready. Finally, something really cool. Fine Line, New York. Look at this. <laughs> Ooh. Look at the. Look oh, at the, okay. Yeah, that's worth the box. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Hey, Zoe, come here. Is that actual leather on the sleeve? I need a model. No, I need a model. Come here, you. Is it leather or is it like. um? Well, yeah, I'm looking. Yeah, that's fine. I think it's leather. Here, take your jacket off and put this leather. jacket on real quick. Yeah, but pleather is <laughs> the teenager's like, oh, ooh, sweet. Put that on and then come into the screenshot here because that's a cool piece. Where'd is it go? a long coat? Yeah. Uh we'll we'll how tall are you, Zoe? Five three. All right, so Zoe's five three. Zoe's my teenage helper. Come on in a little closer. Ooh, that looks great. Oh, she's yeah. the perfect model, too. You need to have her Look model. At that. Oh, that, that is awesome. awesome. <laughs> yeah. Perfect deep hot piece. You need to have her model that because she yep. it fits her well too. Mm -hmm. I like that piece. That is awesome. Yeah. So that's worth the box. Yep. Yeah. We'll definitely put that up for a good premium. Oh, and you've probably made your money back and, and a pro and a good profit, but that that I would put up for for quite a bit. This is cool. <laughs> this is very cool. It, it, might, it might not leave this office, unfortunately. I see that. I mean, I would try like a hundred bucks for that. What do you think? Lola? Look at that. Yeah, and she'll be the perfect model. Yeah. It's got good shoulder pads too. Yeah. Yeah, and shoulder pads are back. Not yeah. happy about that, but they are back. <laughs> oh, and pockets. Look at the pockets. All right. Thank you very much, model. No problem. Yeah. Yeah, Lola see, says see, a teenage assistants are good for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how do we really feel? Well, I'll tell you in a minute how I really feel because I haven't. All right, my box is empty. But um, um, you might not get that jacket back. <laughs> yeah. So much. Lola just said to put it up for about one fifty, Jason. Yeah, I, I like that. Start at one fifty, and you know, consider offers. Yeah. I think that's a probably a this good starting point. All right, so this is a men's shirt. I can tell you from the side, the buttons are on. <laughs> Not women, it's supposed to be a women's box, but it's still nonetheless cool. So this is Sharper Image. Now I know Sharper Image did a line Open. back um, in the '90s. Sharper Image did a line of sh silk shirts um, that had um, some Boston Red Sox player on it. Really? Yeah. Um, I can't remember who, but this is a tennis player, so maybe they had like a sports line. Yeah, there are some. I've I've seen them before, and they've sold 
they've sold um, pretty well. It's 100% silk. Here's the tag. That looks like potentially a really great item because you have the style, which is super in. And then you have, if you can identify who yeah, is. Yeah, the guy's right? name is Simpson, S I M S O N, something. I, I There's his signature. No, I can't. Can you see the signature? Yeah. Simpson Super, Supra? Seymour, Super. I don't know. So I'll have to Simpson? look that up. But I have the tennis. Um, he is a tennis player. And it's kind of cool because it's got like that the 20s kind of uh, flapper girl in the car. And um, so it looks like it's, it's a tennis player of some sort, but I do know that they, I do remember them doing the Boston Red Sox um, shirt. So they, maybe they did like a whole sports line. I don't know. Maybe I was just Googling it quick and I'm not finding it, but um, I'm sure you can I, figure out. I'm sure I'm not. I'm, I'm, unless I'm crazy. I'm pretty sure I remember that. that there was yeah. I did not remember sharper image having clothes ever. Stuff in my head. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of stuff in your head. Well, this is awesome. Oh my God. Wait, they did do they did do a Ted Williams shirt. Well now I have a new holy grail. Is that Boston? Oh, it's only like okay, well it's only going for eighteen dollars, which is good for me. Ted Williams but that's is for you. the Red Sox guy, right? Yeah, he's one yeah, of I knew it. See, I did know. See? He's the one of my cats is named after him. <laughs> Teddy. What is this awesomeness? This Oh, I liked my jacket until this came showed up. What? Ooh. Koi fish? That is killer. Oh, that is awesome. Oh, that's so good. And it, it that's so perfect. Goes with that like, t work from home, too. Yeah, like, that's terrific because the sleeves are very delicate. <laughs> that is awesome. Oh. <laughs> this is it's also um new old stock i don't know if it's got hmm. that is very cool just like glam sheer robe it is it's got uh gold on the sleeves hold on a second if i can get this off without ripping it the sleeves are um so it's like so delicate it's like sheer um Oh. I'm trying not to rip oh, well, one of these other sharper. Oh, okay. Never mind. Okay. Said one is listed really high, but I don't think that's correct. Or so here is this is so cool. This is just awesomeness. This is just pure awesomeness. Can you see that this, this, the trim on the sleeves? It's got oh, like that's gorgeous. Yeah. The koi fish. And here is the tag. Michelle Bolbrock. Yeah, it looks now it's got the it has been more. I can't believe that somebody had it up for sale for four ninety nine because this thing is worth way more than that. But that's like a vintage. It looks like it might have been at a consignment store or something. But this is the coolest part too. Um, ah, it was like an old. This is from like the original days that it was for sale. Oh, I just what? found her. Um, her. Oh, is it Michael? I may have mis misread it. Michael Volbrock. -E -E -E. It's like Michelle Michael with an Michael with an E at the end. Volbrock. V O L. Well, there was there is a Michael Volbrock fashion designer. Huh. Okay, so it's slightly different. Um, I just found his obituary on um, on the New York Times from uh, from twenty eighteen. Well, I will have to do, this is a piece that I'll have to do some research yeah, on. Yeah, for sure. I wonder if it's like it a Disney one or something. Um, amazing. It's like just, mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah, that um, could be a huge Grand Slam. That could be. So, um, yeah, so my box, I, I'm saying, I'm going to say I like these boxes. So Holy this, crap. One of his dresses just sold for $370. Oh, come on. Come on. Let's trade boxes, please. <laughs> The same or the, I like my jacket until you showed me that. Then I was like, boo, tear. Yeah, I think yeah. I have a definite winner. And you can tell, like, even like oh, the, yeah. the fish eyes, like, it's all embroidered and then there's sequins and everything. It's, it's made really well. Yeah. That's why I was afraid to put it on. I was afraid I'd rip it. But, but. 
Mo Clothing Company. Probably 90s, right? Yeah. yeah. So, oh, I feel like I had, are they like capris? I think I had a pair that are exactly like those. They remind me of something like Jennifer like, Anson would wear on friends in the 90s. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. A little preppy. Yeah. Yeah, they're made yeah. in the USA though. So. so those are, you know, those have some appeal. And oh, there's more. Oh, this is cool. So this is vintage Tommy Hilfiger. Um, but it's not, you know what? It's made in Indonesia, so it's not that vintage. It's 2000s. But but Tommy Hilfiger can do well on Depop too. It's a blazer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely would do better if it was um, like a spell out or had the logo on it. But yeah. so it's you know, not using it as a tag, you're getting some of the audience. What is this? This is um, oh, that's like a it's like this a peasant kind of boho. Kit, it's kit, uh, kick it, more Maurice Sassoon, 100% silk. Kick it, kick it. It is made in China, but I think it's. Oh, you know what? It's got that. It's got a tie front, so it's got it's got the front. See what I mean? Like mm -hmm. tie the front. Oh, that's super cute. Yeah. So this is gonna do really well for the style. Mm -hmm. You can see it's got like. Oh yeah, the the, the peasant sleeves and the tie front. Oh, yeah, the tie front. Here's the tag. Oh. Wow, I like my box is good. Yeah. 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 That's that looks like a great Depop item, Etsy item. Uh, this is OBR. Oh, this is definitely late eighties, early nineties, because it says made in the British Crown Colony of Hong Kong. So that's a tip off. Mm -hmm. But it's just a, a basic, um, just a basic shirt, cotton. So nothing that exciting, but yeah, it'll sell on style. It's just a nice, nice oh, vintage sure. basic. And oh my god, you're gonna die! Oh, oh no, you're gonna die, Lola. <laughs> what is it? Oh my goodness! <clears throat> wow. Bye. I'm going. Um. Hello, Valentino. New with bags, Valentino. New old sock, yeah. So, oh, this is Valentino lingerie. Okay. For those of you that don't know Valentino, that is a very, 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 very high end. Sometimes the lingerie is a little bit lower end, so. Um, um, the lingerie, I can see it not going for, but I, I can Yeah, but it's it still. A, or so. Oh, yeah, that'll that'll do well. It's a, yeah, it's like a slip. Um, it's I mean, someone who's daring could wear that as a dress. So, yeah. So, another good Depop item because you can sell it that way. Yeah, um, and it's tiny. Yeah, I think it says. So, it's tiny, 36B. So, um, but yeah. that's still, I still could see, I could see getting by maybe 50 bucks for it. Just off oh, yeah, it. for sure. And then, it feels like I want my money back. <laughs> and then we have I a. Do. Oh, this is super 90s. So this is Nicole Studio, New York. It's just a plain oh. dress, but it's kind of got that, um, it's like um, almost like a travel knit kind of feel. Missing mm -hmm. the belt because it has belt loops, but no belt. Here's the tag. Yeah, that's a, that's a great classic 90s with that like sling. Exactly. Kind of. Made yeah. in USA, paper tag. Mm -hmm. Oh, still got a little Marshall's tag on it. Does it? Like a tiny bit. Oh, you can yeah, see the logo on the back. Okay, good eye. Mm -hmm. Yep. So not bad. And I have a bonus item that I got from Thrift to You that I wanted to show that is um stuck and I'm gonna pull it. Um oh, when the sequence is stuck. Darn. Okay. This is oh, what fun. Is I'll show you the tag in a minute. So fun. Isn't this a cool dress? Mm. It's all sequined and beaded. And it is um, Ricky Freeman for Terry John. So also vintage. Nice. And then everything on thrift to you is a dollar. And then you pay shipping on. Um, they have like a point system for their shipping. So. 
Yeah, so Ricky Freeman for Terry John. Yeah, that's a pretty. I mean, it, it used to do better. It's a high. Sparkles. This will sell based on the style. It's considered a higher end. Um, do you want me to save my miscellaneous box, or or should we just? Uh, um, we're almost at an hour, so we yeah. might want to wrap so up. We can save it first for us. He has a good question. If you find a dress without the belt, but it has belt loops, don't listen. You don't list it. I definitely list um, oh, dresses that are missing the belt all the for time. Sure, just mention that. Yeah, yeah, especially because you can always um, swap out your own. Sometimes they look fine without the belt anyway. Um, definitely depends on you know if it's if it's a lower end dress, I would skip it. If it's a nice yeah. um, item besides missing the belt, definitely list it. I could pull like two items from my so other box. Thrift to you is um, thrift like the number numeral two letter you. you. So everything's a dollar. Then they have a point system where mm -hmm. it's, um, yeah. Can you pop that into the chat, Lola? Yeah. And we did do a, um, a whole unboxing from them um, a while back. So you can find that in our. Yeah. So I will, I can do the rest of this unboxing at a later date, but I just wanted to show a couple things. This looks like it's a good one. So this is a mix. They have a mixed clothing box now where it's men's and women's, um, different sizes, different. So this is a maxi dress. Ooh, pretty. And it is, it's kind of got like a nice tropical print on it. I don't know the brand, but it is new with tags. Chile. Yeah, it sounds like a, like a boutique kind of brand, yeah. but a maxi dress with tags is good no matter what. Yep, so yeah, so this, I don't know what else is in here, but um, you know, we'll see what else. This is, these are pants. These pants are um, St. John's Bay, but they're new with ties. So, so you that, get it. That's the good St. John's, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the St. John's, yeah. But I'll still get, you know, I still might make 20 bucks off of these because they're new with tags. And, so I'll see what else is in there. But um, yeah, not bad. What do you think about your vintage box, Jason? Out of 10. Out of 10? Out of 10, I'll give it a six and a half okay but i'm gonna i'm gonna make up for it right now i wanted to show you something i thrifted not excuse me not thrifted arbitraged at ross right where was i ross yeah oh so check this awesomeness out so if you don't think you can go to places like ross and marshall's and tj maxx to source think again all right tie-dye levi's from the lgbtq line oh Oh, love it. Two jackets, and, and I left them at home. Two matching uh, shorts. Nice. So full Would outfit for Depop. Would you pay? And this was from Ross. I might have to go see if I can hunt. Yeah, hunt so I did pay like 28 for the jacket and 15 for the shorts, but I couldn't leave them behind because they were too cool. Oh, you'll and, get uh, Especially with Pride Month coming up now. Yes, yeah. and the jacket was 118 originally. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, wow. That is... That's awesome. So thought I'd add that in here because I didn't like the rest of my box. So I thought I'd show you something I did like. <laughs> well, your box, no, Jason. So you will definitely get your money back. Oh, I know, I know, but your and box definitely it, wins okay for the whole box and then some because, like Lila said, to try. I mean, you might even want to try to put it up for like one ninety nine. Be it be be um, you know, go for the, the yeah, and then take an offer. I mean, you can start higher. It doesn't hurt. Yeah. 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 So you'll and the and the rest of it is just kind of gravy and you'll do well with 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 you know mm -hmm. with everything in there. There's nothing bad. It's just um but I, I do I think my box was probably a 10. I'm pretty happy. I think it yeah. was, was probably like a 10. That one piece is gonna be five hundred dollars. The, the box is seventy four ninety nine plus five shipping. So we both paid it. <laughs> yeah. So it was a more expensive box. <laughs> yeah, I think my box is pretty good. I like my so, I like that I get Valentino piece. Too. I have to say, having seen both of your boxes, I still regret not getting one because just the thrill of the you know the chance to get something closer to Nay's box would have been really fun. And if they do it again, I think I would give it a shot. Um, but it definitely would temper my expectations a little bit. Um, I am kind of bummed that it wasn't older, which is what I really wanted. Moving us around here. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I, I think, but, but I think I got some. I think now I think I got older pieces, some older pieces, and Jason did not. But nothing was older than '80s either. I think Jason had a piece that was '70s, but so 
I guess it's just all in. <laughs> they are. Oh my gosh, Jess is right. Jess is so right. Yeah. Okay. You're gonna make Very me cool. seasick. I know. I'm trying to figure out what the because I'm trying to like you know I got all the things going on there. Were you trying to bring something up again, Nay? Yeah. Well, I was gonna go through our, to our breaking news. So. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Okay, so we have some breaking thrifting news today, and what we're going to be talking about, and I did clue Jason in on this too. So, <clears throat> so there's been some drama at the post office. Everybody kind of knows that at this point. Jeez. Okay. Um, everybody, not trying to make everybody seasick. Everybody knows that at this point that there's been some drama. Um, so. DeJoy is, uh, Louis DeJoy has kind of been not so great for the post office. <laughs> he, uh, the post office has slowed down a lot over the holidays. There was a big mess. Everything's been, you know, there was a lot of drama over voting and whatnot. So um, there's some political stuff going on behind the scenes. They're, they're seeing if they can maybe oust him, but he's saying he's not going anywhere. In the meantime, he is proposing to... Um, makes to raise the delivery to slow the delivery down on first class mail to um an, at least an F full extra business day um and also um decrease the hours of the post office the post office hours and uh raise first class mail prices so not only will first class mail go up it will be slower so that could if, if that does go through that will definitely impact us as sellers because i know i depend on first class a lot as a clothing seller because i have a lot of items anything on you're on ebay anything under 16 ounces can go first class and um depending on upon where it goes i mean i usually i spend an average of like three to five bucks a package and it's you know then it bumps up to to priority and a priority padded flat rate is 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 over eight dollars now so that's a big jump so if they're going to raise it and slow down the delivery time obviously all of um the online uh platforms are going to have to accommodate for that slowdown in the de estimated delivery times but my guess is that buyers aren't necessarily going to catch on right away and they're not going to understand that it's slower and that might you know that could cause a little bit of a rift there so what do you guys think I mean, I think we know buyers hate to pay shipping. Um, I hate paying shipping. You know, if I can find, if there's two sites and one has free shipping and one doesn't, and I'm buying something new, I definitely go for the free shipping. And I'm more understanding if it's a secondhand item because I, you know, I sell online. But if someone is used to Target or Amazon and they're paying more for shipping on Poshmark or eBay, I mean, I think people will, um, will consider not buying that item versus, you know, splurging on the cost of shipping. So yeah, that's what concerns me is it's just an extra barrier to getting, getting the sales, you know, to happen. I, um, I fully, I fully believe that the joy has no clue who we are. Yeah. And I don't oh. mean specifically Jason, Lola and they, I mean, small sellers who, uh, you know, this is how we all make our living and mm -hmm. he has no clue. He has yeah. not a clue. But, but on the other end of that, funny, someone asked me today, uh, just today, hey, uh, what do I do about this, this slowdown in rising prices? I'm like, nothing. You just keep trucking. Yeah, exactly. And, and they said, she said, what about all the people that complain? And so I don't know what she sells compared to what I sell, but no one complains to me uh, about the rates that I charge. And I always make a little bit of money on my shipping. And I've had my best uh, March ever last year. And I've crushed it this year with five days to go. Like I'm up 35% over last year. And so if you got the right stuff at the right prices and you're offering mm -hmm. uh, worldwide shipping, uh, people will pay. And so, yeah. all the, 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 yes, as Lola said, these are hurdles, but uh, I'm not going to be like, oh, well, and then pack it in. Nope. <laughs> this is how I, I make my living. Roll with the punches. I agree. Right, yeah. For sure. And, and I think Evolve. Yeah, this isn't going to keep me from – from selling or listing, but it does make me feel like I need to be aware of what's going on and advocate for us however we can. Um, whether that means contacting our Congress people or just, mm -hmm. you know, being vocal about it online and, and making it clear what the sentiment is among small business owners. But Jason, I do think you make a great point that he just doesn't know and doesn't care who we are. Yeah, I think thinking more of like, you know, 
the um, Jeff Bezos of the world, you know, the Amaz Amazon and, you know, those kind of, you know, Walmart mm -hmm. and whatnot, not, not necessarily the, the little guys like us. Um, stop for yeah so i've i've mostly stopped free shipping too except for like on some of my more expensive items like if i'm sorry i have a i have um you know like a 300 gucci bag in my closet and you know i'm gonna offer free shipping on that because you know when you're in the scheme of things you know it's not but you know for most of my items i have stopped doing three free shipping and you know what it's gonna happen to everybody so you're not gonna be the only one so um you know you just kind of roll with the punches and uh that's that. So yeah. So uh, just two quick points uh, in the chat is that yes, I think you know that none of this is set in stone yet. So I think this is the point where we need to just keep an eye on it and and try to to advocate for ourselves however we can. And oh, <laughs> and thumbs up. Thank you. Um, and Heather has a great question that I feel like Jason might be better equipped to answer this. Can eBay advocate for us? Oh, absolutely, and they will. But it, th that'll be on deaf ears, kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, because also uh, going back to what they're thinking, they're, you know, hurting Bezos, but I, I guarantee you DeJoy doesn't even know that I sell on Amazon. It's not just Amazon selling on Amazon. There's a, uh, a ton That's of us third party sellers. sellers, not just you think of Amazon, but there's a lot of small businesses. Yep. And they, yeah, A lot of people don't even know that because I've heard of like, you know, over the holidays when, you know, every year it goes boycott Amazon, you know, because they're, but they don't realize that they're, small sellers that sell on Amazon too, that it's not just like, but they think of it as a big, you know, big business and it's not necessarily. Uh, we have some more comments in the chat, but um, I am yeah. going to move on to our market yeah. report. Yeah, build part of shipping into the part. Yeah, so that's strategy. I, yeah, that's a good, that's a good strategy too. So, yep, wow. Good, Brian, that's- Woo yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's amazing. Yes. Yeah, I mean, here, let's put it this way. Two years ago, I was slacking. In March, two years ago, I only did 2,800 in sales. As a comparison, in the last 48 hours, I've done 1,370 in sales. Nice. Wow. So I, I am crushing it. But I'm not, and I'm not selling anything I haven't I haven't taught you guys, and they hasn't taught you guys, and Lola hasn't taught you guys. It's the stuff that we routinely buy and sell, and mm -hmm. we show it to you. That's where you got to watch these shows, take the classes, and actually uh, execute. That's the big thing. Exactly. Execute. A lot of people take classes and they don't do nothing. They watch these shows and they don't do out, do nothing. Yep. Absorb it. Go try and buy a blue box today and see what you get. And yep. and like uh, like Jessica said, it's like legalized gambling for thrifters. Like, what am I going to get? Nadine hit the jackpot. Jason got his money back. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, you never usually, at least, you don't. Um, you're not. You're going to at least break even or and make a little profit. So it's not. You know, it's like gambling without the total risk of losing the shirt off your back. You just and, have to put in the time to list it. Yeah, and they do have good customer service too. If you get a really bad box, like I got a shoe box that was just oh, like yeah. trash shoes, and you know what? They made it right. So. Yeah. Um, so our market report this week, uh, Jason has some sales to share with us. So you want to talk about? This, this, I want to share this one because it was from a blue box. Oh. And I mean, talk about a nothing jacket. It's just a, the lightest silk jacket. I mean, there's nothing to it. And I thought, oh, that's a loser. And I didn't make a ton, but it sold and it sold rather quick. So I'm like, all right, sweet. So even, even things that turn, like I would have never picked this up ever in my life at a thrift store, but I made some money. And so. Wow. Uh, yeah. It looks like a, yeah, it is silk. It is silk, but still. But it's yeah. boring. It's yeah. horribly boring. Yeah. But you know, yeah. I think you had the right keywords like silk bomber jacket. Somebody might've been looking for a. Yeah. So the, 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 the blue boxes force you to learn new things like all these silk women's blouses I got, I've never dealt with. And so when I say learn new things, it means my team out there is going to learn new things and then and filter it down to me. So, you know. Dun, dun, dun. All right. These ended yesterday. I didn't even share them on Thrifty Business. I saved it for Nate Lowe's Thrift Talk. Aww. Thank you. Look at that. Put it up at auction. $9.99. My teenager was like, what are you doing? And I'm like, we're going to see That's where it ends funny. up. It was 84 uh, sets, but they're That's all travel cool. ones. The travel ones aren't as exciting as, like, say, Disney mm -hmm. and the some of the kids' stuff. But 
she put this great lot together and uh, of travel stuff from all over the world, and it ended at two hundred and seventy-five dollars. Woohoo! Did you consider right. doing parting this out, doing it all individually? Or did you know from the beginning? Well, we did a lot of it. We've done uh, so. I bought a whole box of leftovers okay. at an estate sale where they collected Viewmasters like I collect tiki mugs. Cool. The reels on the second day, they still had like fifty different Viewmaster players from the simplest to the most exotic. And I was there on day two. I'm like, hmm, what good stuff did I miss on day one? So they had this big box, and I just dumped the, some on the table. And I said, how much for the whole box? And they tried to give me some crazier price because they were they were trying to get like four a set. I go, how about three hundred bucks for this whole box? And the box was huge, and we we settled on four hundred. And yesterday alone, on just like seven auctions, I did five hundred, and I've already made like seven hundred. So the leftovers were uh, a good amount of money. And right now, we're listing the empty cases that sell pretty well too. So you know, you gotta when you buy a lot, you gotta squeeze the money out of everything. So even the empties are worth money. Interesting. That's awesome. And we have a, a whole series of uh, things here that. <laughs> So these are uh, adult books. They're not. Uh, they're all. They're they're art. Uh, they're pictures. They're they are nude uh, through most of it, uh, but there isn't uh, anything graphic about it. And I found them at a record store. We're back to finding things that aren't music at record stores. They were four bucks each, and as you can see, I sold them for twenty five dollars each. Not and bad. It, again, if you know. If you don't have a problem with a human bo a naked body, yeah, whether you're straight or gay, doesn't matter. But if you see a cool product that, hey, four bucks, I'm like, no way. And uh, I've sold five of these little, what they call uh, zines in the past month. And uh, my customers are very happy. They always leave me positive feedback. Yeah. And these are uh, now, did you, you didn't put, I'm surprised you didn't put like, um, like LGBTQ or anything. Well, right. the funny thing okay. is, okay, so I let the teenager work on these and she's learned how to do things. Oh, actually, the teenager did the pictures, the adult did the listings. Uh, yeah, because I went to search my thing because I had uh, gay men in my first round and we didn't have yeah. it in this round, but they still sold. But but it, it's, a, it's a learning lesson uh, for uh, my adult assistant that we definitely missed those keywords, but they still sold. So, they still you know. sold, but, but yeah, that would have definitely, because that's the, the audience, obviously, the LGBTQ. Mm -hmm audience that are going to look for those so if you had put you know gay erotica lgbtq those kind of keywords and, and the teenager came back with photos and she had no inside photos i go hey you know we do books we take one or two pictures of the inside yeah. she goes am i allowed to do that you know because they're naked i go well not every picture is naked so yeah. just find the yeah. ones that tease it yeah the ones that kind of yeah no and then problem. that way the person who bought it it's going to be like you know yeah. exciting to them because they didn't really see much just enough just so that a little was the sale of Multi multi um, items from one. Side Which category did you use for these? Did you use like an adult category or because? No, I used uh, because there was nothing graphic. It's yeah. no different than you know um, nude art and, and nude uh, you know like statues. So I just used the the um, the uh, just the books. See the category, but I can't go yeah. back to the top. Categories at the top. Yep, books, and we just did magazines because there's signs. Oh, books, magazines. I see it up there, way up there in little tiny. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Interesting. So I have, but it is funny when I bought those. Of course, she just assumed I was a bear, and which oh. is a, a large, hairy, gay male. And yeah. she was telling me about all the the gay happenings in town because I was buying them. But I, you know, I was like, "Cool, thanks, thanks uh, for being cool." Well, hey, you might want to attend. I mean, they are fun events, so you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so. I uh, so the, I actually sold a few a few of my quote duds this week, which I was happy to clear out. Took and Ann, Ann Taylor is a tougher sell, and I I was glad to get nineteen dollars for this skirt that I believe I paid a buck for. So and I had it listed for a while. It was a size four, so it was silk, but you know nothing too exciting about it. So I was kind of I was happy to sell that to get that, and this was the ultimate dud of the duds that came from a ten for ten bolt blue box. I sold a Sag Harbor jacket. So that is a, a, a very bad, a very duddy brand. So <laughs> yeah, so duddy. I was happy to sell that for 22 bucks, which I was quite surprised about somebody, but it did have a cute detail on the collar and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But still the brand is um, you know, less than less than um not a brand that you I would even pick up ever, but it happened to come in the 10 for 10 blue box. So I paid a buck for it and uh so that was a, a good dud sale there. 
And then this was another one that I had sitting around for a while. I did like the color of it, but the brand was not anything special. Um, I took an offer. I did, it didn't sell for $24.99. Took an offer for $19.99, I think. It was new with tags, but um, still, it was another one that I had had sitting around for a while. So, um, And I do believe that this also was a blue box um, from a mixed, not mixed, uh, from a women's clothing box. Um, nice. Yeah, so I had some good blue box sales there. And then this was um, an older listing I had, not the necessarily great pictures there, but it was vintage. It was a vintage roll of, of wallpaper. So, and I sold it for twenty four ninety nine. So, um, very cool. Yeah, so I was happy about that. Um, and then this just sold, sold this morning. They haven't paid yet, but I did want to. This was a blue box from the jacket box, wow. and I, took, I didn't. I took an offer for seventy five. That shows the, the full price, but I took an offer for seventy five plus shipping. So I was happy with that. It was. It's a Burton oh, jacket. Cool. And it's an extra small, but the funny thing is I had it listed all winter because I had gotten that blue box, that jacket box, probably back in like early fall, late summer. So I was not, I was, I was expecting it to maybe sit for another season because obviously it's not snowboarding season anymore, but nonetheless, I got an offer for 75 and accepted it this morning. Of course, hopefully they'll pay. They haven't as of yet, but still. So and we have a question for you. We want to know what your best blue box score was. Um, and if you have, you don't have one yet, if you haven't purchased a blue box, go and get one. They restock tonight, 6 p.m. Eastern. You do have to be quick. Uh, I would recommend, um, you know, hitting the trigger. Not, you know, you can't shop around and just like leisurely put things in your cart because they will sell out no. quickly. Um, sometimes like they restock at six, sometimes by six or one, they are sold out. Yeah. Set an alarm for like five fifty-five if, um, if you want to buy something and just have it open in your browser and, um, and reload until it's, it's there. Grab it as soon as you can. Nice, Brian. Nice. Gay pride, pride in Milton Manors, Florida. Yeah. Oh yeah. The pride trades are so much fun. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, she's offering Jason advice on, on what event, Hey, you might want to attend some Of course, you know, now with COVID it's, they don't have as many, but I think right, it was crazy. She was so well versed in what was happening, and it was LA. It wasn't like I was in a small place. She gave me like ten events in LA happening in the next oh, week. That's like, funny. Oh. like, are you a tour guide besides looking <laughs> at the record store? Yeah. <laughs> and Pride stuff is great to list all year round, but especially mm -hmm. with Pride Month coming. Pride Month is in June. We did a whole Pride show last year. We'll probably do something to celebrate Pride Month again, uh, since um. I'm obviously a very good friend of the LGBTQ community and Lola is a member of it. So we will, uh, we love pride month. So, um, and, it, and things sell all year round, but especially, you know, market them. If you have those rainbow items, those pride items, people are looking for it. And Jason, where can we find you? Well, you can find me all these places. Uh, one, if you want, a lot of people like to look at my listings and see what I'm selling. I made it super easy. If you just go to tikipugmusic.com. It redirects you right into my eBay store. And then come on over to the thrifting board it is a free Facebook group with over 58,000 uh, members who love to help each other uh, in an instant. Someone had an autographed baseball bat today and they didn't know who it was. And the, the answer was there in about 32 seconds. So uh, yeah. come on over and join the thrifting board. And each Thursday night, I do a show called thrifty business, except for this coming Thursday. And then on Sundays with my mom, so I'm past your expiration date being thrifty over 50, that is uh, my YouTube channel, Jason T. Smith. And then come on over to jasonthrifts.com for my classes. And thank you very much, Lola and Nay, for having me on. You are Always so welcome. Fun. We love having you as a guest. And uh, you and uh, Lola, we can be found all, all over um, multiple platforms. Nay is on Mercari. I'm not really, I have an account, I don't really use it. Uh, but Poshmark, Depop, eBay. And you can find us on Instagram and you can always email us at nalothrifts at gmail.com. If you have any ideas, um, anyone you want to nominate for a future guest, any topics you want us to cover or just feedback, um, we love to hear it all. So, um, yeah, get in touch if you feel like it and um, leave a comment if you have an answer to our question or, you know, anything to say about um, what we uh, featured on the show today and Nay and Jason's um blue boxes so yeah and we'll see you next week again uh for our y2k fashion trends show and then tune in to jason's show i i already canceled out your that's picture. cool 
But uh, your show is on Sunday night at 7 p.m., correct? And they're yep. going to be talking about Coral with your We're mom. We're talking about Coral. I guarantee you, anyone watching right now, you've all walked past Coral, never thought twice about it. But you left behind big money. Big. Yeah. Huge. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching. Yes. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.